Okay, the next major area, and we will not go into detail on this at all, but I, uh, I definitely recommend that you at least scan through the slides. Uh, and some of your reading material, of course, will, uh, I've indicated that you should scan uh, in the regulations on this as well. Uh, the, the issue is, you know, what is a creditable tax? Uh, is any tax, uh, you know, can a company or an individual claim any tax that it pays to a foreign government as, uh, uh, as a credit? Okay, you're shaking your head no. I'm shocked that, uh, that you would say no to that. Yeah. Yes, it's okay, quite so complicated. It's quite complicated, yeah. It, it, it's really terrible. Uh, uh, you find uh, very, very detailed rules. Okay, maybe the thing that we should step back on and say, well, there's all these terrible detailed rules. What are they trying to get to? That it's an income tax similar to an income tax in the U.S. Okay, that, uh, that I'll, I'll rephrase it slightly, but... That's exactly right. The concept is that the tax has to be on uh, a tax on income roughly in the sense that the U.S. imposes tax. Now, uh, where could there be differences? I mean, what are just some examples of differences? Somebody has read this, some of this stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so some of the difference, one of them was like if it was actually voluntary. If the tax is voluntary, then it's not considered an income tax. Hey, has uh, anybody uh, ever uh, been to a Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, uh, now do you think uh, Starbucks are... Good, uh, good citizens. Oh, I, I think they are. Uh, uh, they are such good citizens that in the United Kingdom, because they had not been paying tax for, I think, more than a decade, uh, claiming that they had losses uh, in the UK for all this period of time, uh, they. <coughs> said that they made a commitment, irrespective of what our income is, we will pay you, I think the figure was $20 million, uh, we will pay, you know, this much tax to the UK authorities uh, uh, as a minimum amount. And this was for one or two years, uh, going back six or seven years. I'm not sure whether they continued it. Uh, I haven't seen anything on that. but. They volunteered to pay something, and part of the initiative for that, I think, was wanting to be good citizens. But another thing was that uh, there were boycotts by you know, otherwise happy coffee drinkers uh, boycotting their stores in the UK. This may have uh, persuaded them to do uh, this. Uh, now, is that a uh, is that a compulsory payment? If you get into the regulations, you find in you know somewhere in there that uh, to be a tax, it has to be compulsory. Now, uh, you're bringing you brought up the compulsory thing. When I asked the question a few minutes ago of where you know where might there be a difference. I was thinking more from the standpoint of what might cause a tax not to be a tax on income in sort of the U.S. sense. What if there's no deduction for some major category of expense? They don't allow a deduction for interest expense. Or maybe there's no depreciation allowed on uh, certain classes of assets. 
maybe income is determined not on how much, uh, you know, or let's say revenues are recognized in the tax computation, not on the basis of how much you actually realize, but on some formula approach uh, to calculate an amount of income. There can be various things that you run into. Uh, the point is that uh, for each country, uh, for each country's tax, uh, before claiming a credit and knowing that, gee, I, you know, my client or my company, if I'm working for the company, before knowing that they that, that a credit will actually be allowed, uh, in theory, you have to go through this kind of analysis. Now, fortunately for a lot of countries, there have been rulings, revenue rulings, and other pronouncements where the IRS has looked at something and has determined that, yes, that this country's tax is a creditable tax. Uh, but, of course, you also have to look at the date of that ruling and say, has there been any major changes since then? <laughs> Uh, because, of course, a ruling at one point in time does not mean that conditions are still the same. Now, uh, I would say that in the majority of situations you're going to run into, uh, this is not a major issue, and it's one of the reasons I'm not beating on you to do anything more than scan through these rules uh, relatively quickly, because otherwise it would a lot of your time. But there are, uh, there are some industries uh, where this is a major issue. Now think about uh, a mining operation or uh, somebody, you know, a company in the oil business that's drilling and taking oil out of the ground. Does a company in the oil business, for example, come into another country and just freely take oil out of the ground and export it and, uh, or even sell it locally and uh, that's uh, the end of the day? Uh, okay, maybe there's a tax on income, but uh, uh, is it sort of that oil is free to take out of the ground? Or do countries like to take a piece of the action. And what's the term we often call that piece of the action? Well, a royalty. So much per ton of oil, or so much per barrel of oil. And maybe, who knows, maybe it varies by the quality of the oil that comes out of the now, a royalty, is a royalty a tax available for a tax credit? No, it's not. It's, of course, not a tax on income. Now, in most situations that involve two parties, like a government and a taxpayer, or a government and a company that's paying a royalty, there are two adverse parties, and whatever you know agreement they come to is at arm's length, and you know, should be a valid economic agreement. But is that true between the government and a company which is extracting oil? That they're really at arm's length with respect to how much is a royalty and how much is a tax on income. If the U.S. gives a dollar-for-dollar dollar tax credit, then, you know, and a royalty, like the deduction of a tax, is only worth 21% of the amount of the royalty, in terms of reducing the U.S. company's tax liability. 
isn't there some mutual benefit between the foreign government and the company to transform some of the what's economically a royalty into more tax because the US would give a dollar for dollar benefit and that leaves more for those two parties to share between them. Now a lot of the complication, a lot of the complication that you find in the foreign tax credit area is specifically because of concern about the uh, about taxpayers receiving benefits for their payments. Is something a royalty or is it a tax? Is it a user fee or is it a tax? And you find a lot of this complication. Again, if you get involved with clients or the company you work for uh, that's in one of these particular industries, you will get to know these regulations by heart. But if not, uh, just uh, know generally what's there and you know, save your time, uh, so to speak, uh, for details in other areas. Again, a very important area on what is a credible, credible tax, but uh, I don't want to say much more than uh, this. If it's important to your industry, it's important. Uh, notice that, uh, there, that we've, we've mentioned withholding taxes a number of times. Withholding taxes are typically a percentage of the gross income, often the revenue, uh, you know, the amount of interest, the amount of royalty, uh, the amount of dividends. Well, does that sound like a tax on net income? No, it's a tax on gross income. And that's not in the spirit of the uh, of the regulations which tell you what is a creditable tax. So 903, which is very short and sweet, relatively speaking, basically says that if instead of a general, if instead of applying a general tax on net income, a particular taxpayer is subject to a substituted tax, then uh, that will be allowed uh, as a creditable tax. So this is why withholding taxes are generally allowed as credits, even though they are not tax, uh, you know, taxes on income in the U.S. sense. 